In this tutorial, we're going to see how we can use Adobe Interactive Forms in interactive mode inside WebDIN Pro for ABBA. Now, we haven't created a form yet. We're going to start by first creating our WebDIN Pro application and building our context within the WebDIN Pro component, uh, actually within a view in this particular example because it's a small, simple example. But that's going to allow us, by starting with our WebDIN Pro object and defining the context there, when we create the Adobe form, uh, we can generate it off of the existing context and it'll pull in all those definitions for us and we won't have to recreate them. Now we're going to have a very simple form today. Uh, this is a, a fairly simple example. We're going to have a tax form. We're going to have a piece of data that we're going to pass into this tax form. This could be something that we looked up off of the user uh, that's logged in and, and then passed in the form. Uh, to keep this example simple, we're just going to hard code a starting amount. Then inside this uh, rather complex tax form, there could be calculations or data entry. But basically, we're going to end up with one final amount that we want to pass back out of the Adobe form and then store in our ABAP system. Uh, instead of actually storing it in the database, we're going to keep it simple today as well. We're going to show it uh, on the output of our WebDIN Pro view to show that the data is passing back out of Adobe and into ABAP WebDIN Pro. So for our Adobe form, we really only need two fields, an amount coming in to initialize our form and an amount coming out that's the result of the form. So that's the data that we're going to map uh, into the form context. Uh, you also have the ability to pull back the entire PDF source of the result of the interactive form. Say you want to store it away for later printing or emailing, you can pull back the complete source. Uh, and that's why we're going to create another context uh, uh, attribute of type xString, because we'll use that later. Uh, now, like I said, we want to pass in an initial value. We're going to simulate uh, looking up a real value for somebody by simply hard coding a value into the initialization of our of our WebDIN Pro view. So we're going to take that uh, input amount and uh, we're just going to hard code a number in there. Let's say 50,000. That sounds like a nice good amount. So now we're going to, in initialization, that, that value in our local context is going to be set to 50,000. And that allows you to see how uh, data binding between uh, both input and output from WebDIN Pro into uh, the Adobe form happens, because that data is going to flow into our Adobe form without us writing any code. So, uh, like I said, we also want some data to flow out of our form, so we're just going to have a couple of spots here on our WebDIN Pro application where we can show the data that comes back out. Uh, like I said, just to demonstrate the flow of data. Uh, ideally, I guess you would probably store this data away in a, in a database table somewhere or process it into a business object, but it's just an example. Alright, so we have a place to show that now. Let's put our label before our field. There we are. And we're ready. Now we're going to set our flow of our layout. There we are. Now we're ready to insert the element for the Adobe Interactive object. Give it a simple name. Interactive form is the type of UI element. And we'll move it up so it's the first thing on our output. Up, oh, not down. There we are. We have it where we want it now. We'll make it a little larger so that you can actually read the form instead of 300 pixels. We'll 
We'll make it a little bit bigger. Now the enabled attribute. The enabled attribute actually controls uh, if this is going to be an interactive form or not. We want it to be interactive, so we set it to enabled. Our PDF source is uh, the bound uh, context attribute that will contain the raw source when we're done. Our template source is where we're going to type the name of our PDF form itself. Now this form doesn't exist yet. When we hit enter, it's going to start the process to create it. And we have to have an interface into our interactive form. It doesn't exist either. It will be generated for us off of our WebDIN Pro context when we choose the context. When we choose Adobe Data as our context. That will all be mapped in. You'll see that in a second. All right, now we've, we're in the Adobe Form uh, Editor. The Adobe Form Designer is displayed inside of the ABOP uh, SE80 Editor. We see our WebDIN Pro Context is mapped into our data view. What we want to do, rather than building an entire form from scratch, is I've gone out to the, to the U.S. government uh, federal tax website, pulled down an existing tax form, uh, that's just a PDF, and I'm going to import it in to show you the ability to create very complex forms very quickly off of existing PDF. Uh, I have a few fonts that don't map. I don't have those fonts installed on, on my PC, uh, so I'll just have it choose the closest font that's possible. And you can see now we have this really complex form brought in in a matter of seconds. And we're going to be able to data bind our, our context elements right into spots on this form. And just to show you what the original form looked like, bring it up, and here's the original government form. Now, in a real situation, you might have to insert some form calculations. Um, do some further manipulation with the form. We're going to keep it real simple. We're just going to data bind our input and output elements to a couple different uh, areas on the form. So our store starting uh, income amount we'll, we'll bring in. and We just need to drag and drop it to that area on the form. Now we're bound. Next we have our final tax amount. Back it up so we can see where we're at. We have our final tax amount that will map to the out amount. There. Now those are bound. Now there's two special elements that we're going to want to put on here. First is the hide reader toolbar. That's going to hide the normal uh, Adobe Reader toolbar, so all we see is the content of the form itself when it opens in WebDIN Pro. And then finally we have the special WebDIN Pro Submit to SAP button. This is going to trigger the update into our WebDIN Pro application and do the, the outbound mapping of the context nodes and pass the data back uh, to WebDIN Pro. So we're pretty much done with our rather complex form. Let's have a look at what this all looks like now. You can see that the Adobe form opens up. Uh, the normal header's gone. Our 50,000 is mapped into our starting field. So you see inbound context mapping. Uh, the form is open for additional data entry. Uh, like I said, calculations, uh, more data entry, and of course the whole form can be saved away then. But we're interested in this final amount. Uh, however you got to these results, whether you manually entered them or whether uh, they were calculated, but we have this final amount of, let's just say, $4,500 in taxes we have to pay. 
And then we're going to hit the submit button. And uh, right away you can see that our WebDimpro context has been updated. The value uh, has changed on the WebDimpro object itself. And actually when the form was rebuilt, uh, inbound mapping occurred again. And uh, that value is still there in the form itself.